Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about resistance spot welding. This is my spot welder. It's a uh, Harbor Freight 115 volt spot welder that I got second hand for free. That's a long story. Anyway, we're gonna clean the cobwebs off this thing and see if we can't get some stuff stuck together. And while we're at it, we'll talk a little bit about the fundamentals of uh, resistance spot welding. You know, when it's used in industry, oftentimes the machinery is, you know, the size and weight of an elephant and it can uh, do some amazing things. But let's see what we can do with a, a simple unit like this. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about how this works. This thing has a few parts to it right here. This is a transformer and it takes the uh, electricity out of the wall, which is, you know, relatively higher voltage and relatively low current. And it turns it into a really low voltage and really high current. Now how that uh, works is it passes electricity through one of these arms down through this part that touches the metals, the electrode. And then you have a sandwich of metal, right? So this is good for welding lap joints where you have overlapping material and then passes the electricity through there, through this other electrode and back through this other arm, right? And so when you do that, you create some heat passing that electricity through an electrical resistance. And the greatest resistance is actually gonna be between the two pieces of metal where those meet. And since that's the greatest point of resistance, that's where heat's gonna be created and that's enough to melt the metal, right? You're typically melting your metal. There are a few specialized processes in industry that don't melt the metal, but it's pretty uncommon. Now in industry, you'll have you know automatic controls where it'll control the number of cycles that actually passes electricity back and forth through or a given period of time. But on something like this, you just have a handle and a switch right here that you pull and that energizes it. So you're really up to counting yourself, you know, one banana, two banana, three banana. That's what we're gonna do here in a minute. One of the most important things when it comes to resistant spot welding is having electrodes that are the right shape in good condition and having them aligned. So we're gonna do our best to clean these up right here. It looks like they've, uh, you know, they could use a little bit of love. So I'm just gonna pull the electrodes off here and try to clean them up on my belt sander. And uh, you know, I'm thinking there's gotta be a better way than taking off the tip of my finger here. So I go ahead and chuck it up in my drill for this uh, precision machining operation here to roughly clean them up. Then I'll clamp them in the vise and finish it off with the file. The other thing I need to do is line these electrodes up. So I, I'm gonna have to loosen this up and move these arms around to try to get them in the best alignment that I can. So it'll squeeze and give me the spot that I want. Now I've got things set up pretty well here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a bunch of little test coupons here out of some scrap steel. This is some pretty nasty, rusty stuff I have laying around. But uh, you know, I'll cut out uh, a few of these and then clean some of that corrosion off the side just with some scotch bright here to be able to test it. So this is some 18 gauge material and that works out to be about uh, 50 thousandths of an inch or you know about 1.2 millimeters. And I'm gonna clamp this down here and then energize the thing for three seconds, see what we've got. And I'm not counting with a stopwatch, I'm just counting you know one, two, three, and uh, we'll test it out. Now one of the tests that's common for spot welds is called a peel test. And that's where you'll actually try to peel your spot welds apart. Now, a lot of the times that's done by wrapping it around some circular uh, device, but I'm, I'm just gonna use some pliers in the vise here. So I'm bending on this and you know, just right off the bat, I can see whatever happens here, it's pretty strong. But anyway, I work on it a little bit and get this thing to pop apart. And in a peel test, you're really looking for the base metal to fail around the actual spot weld itself rather than you know have the weld itself break, um, which didn't happen here. So I'm gonna try running a little bit more time. So I'm trying this here now for four seconds on another set. We'll peel it apart once again. It's not going. All right, so let's try one more. And this time I'm gonna hold this down for seven seconds. Now, after I do this, I take a look here at the weld just on the surface and I can see not only do I have a large area that's oxidized around the material, I can see that it's sinking down in, which isn't really ideal, um, but for what I'm gonna do with it, it probably is fine. Anyway, I can also see that I'm not getting a circular shape on my weld, right? It's kind of oblong. And when I get in here and look more closely at the electrodes, I can see that I didn't get them aligned quite right. So I'm gonna take another stab at that. 
loosen this up, tap it around, and then let's try another one here with that five second time. Now this is a pretty long time to hold a spot weld. You know, your industrial equipment does it much faster, but this is just running on 115 volts and, and seems to take a little bit of time for, for this thickness of material. Anyway, after five seconds here, let's take it over, try the peel test on this. And as I'm pulling on it and working on it, I can see, you know, this is pretty strong. And finally, when it pops apart, I can see there's a little hole right there where it actually pulled the spot weld out of the material. Now, while that's really, you know, a good thing to be looking for when you're doing a peel test, I will say that the size of this spot weld is pretty small for this thickness of material. So I'd want to put several on if it was something that needed to be strong. Now, what I'm actually going to use this for is putting little hangers on the back of signs that I cut out on my plasma table. So in all reality, it probably doesn't matter but uh, you know at least we we got to play with it and, and figure out what this thing is capable of and I'm always surprised what you can do just with some pretty basic tools well if you learned something in this video or enjoyed it let me know by hitting that thumbs up below we'll see you next time